Hey everybody, I'm Nick Meister, and welcome back to Let's Play Hitman Blood Money. Today we're doing the silent assassin run of Death on the Mississippi. And I, uh, I had to re-record this since I accidentally deleted the files, so... I had a lot of fun, uh, recreating the magic I attained the first time I recorded it. Like I was saying, uh... Silent Assassin for this particular stage, uh, for this particular stage with standard equipment is pretty Welcome tricky, to Mississippi, but 47. I managed to figure it out, so let's get started. And that's me fucking up. Let's get started. Okay, so first we're gonna run to the boiler room like we did before. Pick this lock. And I'm gonna walk around here and sneak up on this guy shoveling coal and give him a concussion. And maybe a broken neck. I don't know. He's not gonna be in a good way when he wakes up, that's for sure. Now, I know I could throw him into the furnace, but I'm afraid I might get seen by another one of his uh, engineer buddies, so I'm gonna drag him back here where no one is guaranteed to uh, come across his body. Now I'm gonna wait over here by the door. <clears throat> Put my fiber wire out. And check out my sweet belt buckle. I'll be strangling everyone in this, uh, in this run, actually. Every one of my targets will be strangled, I believe. Here he comes, I'm hiding that behind my back. Close that door and choke him. One of the things I really appreciate about uh, Hitman Blood Money as opposed to the earlier Hitman games is that sneaking up on people and killing them with melee weapons is a lot easier. Uh, you know, and I was playing Hitman 2 a while back and uh, uh, if you didn't sneak, uh, sne uh, using the weapon on the person was impossible. Like, you just couldn't use it. And it'd also turn around instantly if you weren't sneaking, so... No, it's pretty difficult. So we're gonna head through here to the back of the boat, and we're going to, uh... get a new outfit, because we can't really go too far in this engineer's outfit. So now we are a purser, and now we can uh, go higher up into the ship uh, without arousing suspicions. Let's take over here, and for some reason this couple doesn't want uh, 47, the purser, to, to see them making out, so they're gonna step into this room here. Now, uh, I'm gonna kill this Gator Gang member in this room to save time. The problem with that, however, is that his girlfriend will come back in a couple minutes and find the dead body. So, we're gonna need to deal with that. And we're gonna need to deal with it in a way that, uh, that makes sure that she isn't killed outright. So, how do we do that? Just make sure this door is closed. There we go. Head over here, and she's heading out onto the deck, which is perfect because we're gonna push her into the water. In case you couldn't have guessed, push her, and she seems to be immune to pushing, so we're just gonna knock her out instead. And let's throw her overboard. Now, because we didn't kill her before we threw her over the edge, she is an accident. Her parents never wanted her, she was an accident. Okay. Head over here. And, uh... We're gonna head around to the... Ooh, excuse me. We're gonna head around to the other side of the boat. And from there, we're gonna climb up onto, uh... What's essentially the VIP area. Although, no one will care if we're out on the deck for some reason. They only care if we're inside. And... The Gator Gang member is nowhere near us, so we can sneak in here. And, uh, 
There's our purser. Our first class purser, so let's, uh... Oh, uh, uh, d don't mind me, I'm just, uh, you know, hanging out. Now, this part's strange, because normally he tells us to get out, um, but now he doesn't seem to care. That's good for us. Uh, I can't tell you how many times, uh, I've messed up, uh, tranquilizing this guy, because... Oh. There isn't a lot of room to maneuver with this big uh, table in the middle of the room, so it's easy for you to bump into him when you're trying to get him with a sedative and then have him turn around and see you and freak out. Now, let's put him in there. And I'm ignoring the cake because uh, when you poison someone, um, when exactly they're going to die is uh, pretty unpredictable. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that the Gator Gang members in this level are actually security guards. Um, and because they're security guards, if they find a body, uh, that immediately counts against your rank because, uh, because, uh, well, they're security guards. So. And we gotta drop him over the edge in this specific spot because if you don't, he'll fall on the lower deck and someone will find the body. That's not good, that'll lower our rank. Now, this guy inside is going to step outside to munch on his hamburger, I guess. And here's our our big opportunity to take out two of the Gator Gang members without anyone seeing us. Now, this part up here is difficult because, like I said, the Gator Gang members are security guards, and if they find a body, your rank will be dropped. So, we gotta make sure that no one finds the body. So... I'm gonna drag him over here with our shirtless burger munching friend. And as long as we don't break anyone's patrol route, um, no one will see them. So they should be safe over here. Wow, that's two Gator Gang uh, members down. And I'm gonna leave that shotgun there because that's my that's my hillbilly bait. You know, um, no offense to people from the south, but. Well, these Gator Gang members are clearly hillbillies, and they love their guns, so... Uh, once uh, our last Gator Gang member sees that gun, he won't be able to resist. He will come right over, and he won't even notice us sneaking up behind him and strangling him. Oh, there's the shotgun. Sure is a beauty, isn't it? Sure is. Oh, here he comes. I'm just gonna stand over here. Finding our own business, just looking at the water. And oh, he's he's seen our our bait. He's make he's heading right towards it, and now you are dead. So now that all three Gator Gang members are dead, we only have one target left. So there aren't too many ways we can fuck this up, but there is a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. I'm gonna drag him over here with his friends. And for some reason, 47 let go. Maybe he's tired. Maybe 47's tired. No, yeah, he must be tired. He just dropped him again for no reason. I'm sure dragging around all these big muscle bound men uh, gets tiring after a while. Welcome. And, yeah, I'm just checking to make sure all the Gator Gang members are dead. So let's close this door here. You wanna stay away from that first class purser. And, uh, oh, great, this guy. Slowing me down. We gotta wait for this guy to get out of the way. Although, I don't think I showed this particular... I don't think I showed this particular instance in the first playthrough. Let's get a little closer. Cheeks. How long must uh oh I endure these uh oh so I think they've made me, folks. I think... I think this guy's made me. He's gonna go back to playing sailor, I guess, or something. Mm. Yeah, I'm all in with anticipation, sweet cheeks. Oh shit! What the fuck? Oh man, how did they know? Oh, what the? That was completely fucking random. I mean, did the first class purser give him some sort of secret code or some shit? I don't know. Uh, okay, here we are, back again. I basically did everything 
I did the first time, only now I'm putting this guy to sleep. So he won't interrupt me. Ah, that was fucking annoying. Almost as annoying as that Mardi Gras level. I'm sure you guys remember that. How many times I fucked that one up. No. I fucked this one up way more times. It's just that... <clears throat> Mardi Gras, the fuck-ups were a lot and more entertaining. The fuck-ups in this level were really just kind of mundane and frustrating. So let's head in here and get our last objective. Which are these papers, probably pictures of... Skip Muldoon doing some nasty things. Now let's... Now there's really nothing left to do but to get out of here. And I gotta say, I'm... I'm, uh... I'm glad that it's over, because... I'm pretty much sick to death of this level. Um... I'm... I'm trying to think of what I can do for the... For the terrorist run that I haven't really done. Um... That I haven't done yet. You know, I, I mean, I don't, uh... I don't want to be just kind of a... Like a boring... You know, just march down the hallway, shooting everything that moves, play through, but... You know, it might be. It might be that. Because, uh... <laughs> because I'm not really sure what else I can do with this level. Um, if you guys in the thread, uh, the few people that are posting, I appreciate it. If you want to make any suggestions, I'd appreciate it. Because I'm not really quite sure what to do. So, anyway, we're, uh... Heading back to the boiler room. Um, the boiler room can ruin your day because it's a restricted area, and if you are spotted in your suit for too long, um, you know, you, uh, you, uh, oh, and I ran into some really bad lag there, but yeah, it's the same playthrough. Ah, oh, here comes the lag again. Okay. Right. Terrible lag. Had to stop the recording. Anyway, we gotta get out of here as quickly as possible, because if we're in here too long, they'll of course, uh, become violent, and that will count as a, uh, that will count as covers blown. So, <clears throat> here we are, seven kills, one accident. That poor lady who was just dating the wrong person at the wrong time. And we made a lot of cash money. Great. That's awesome. Alright, so, uh, I'm gonna take a look at the newspaper here. Hmm. Um, I think I showed everything in the newspaper in the last video, so if you really want to read the newspaper, you can, uh, pause the video, read the whole thing. Um, you know, Joe's shop for self-defense weapons? Yeah, right, self-defense. <laughs> oh, I really could use that push knife, though. Kind of wish that was a weapon in the game, a push knife, standard equipment. Anyway, that's it for Let's Play Hitman Blood Money. I'm Nick Meister. I'll see you next time.